Hi guys, welcome to the video. Today we're going to go through installing one of these extruders onto my K1 Max. Now I've been having a little bit of problems with my extruder. It's getting a bit old I guess. I've had it for over a year and it, I don't run it every now and again. It runs 24-7 since I got it a year ago. So the old extruder is probably getting a bit old and the cogs are probably getting a bit worn. So this is the old extruder that we're going to pull out. So this is one I've got from another one. So this is my spare. <laughs> um, we're going to pull that out and we're going to put this new one in. So that's what we're going to do today and see if it makes a difference to the extrusion. So at the moment I'm having a little bit of problems with the enough extrude, uh, filament extruding out and it's not a clog, I've checked all that. I can push it through in the hand. So if I put a little bit of tension on the back of the filament, I can actually push it in through the Bowden tube and it will come out. If I don't push, it will not come out. So it's more like the, the extruder's not pulling it through or the gears are slipping on the filament. So this one has an adjustment knob on it. You can see that adjustment knob in the picture there, that little knob there. Which one? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that one there. So a little adjustment knob which uh, pushes the cogs where the filament goes between closer together or can pull it further apart to give it a bit of relief if it's pushing out too much. Um, which the, uh, these ones don't have. These ones are set, you can't adjust them and it's just got the little the little flicky switch here which allows you to lay the filament, that's it. Where when you've got a little turning knob like this one, that little turning knob there you can adjust how much tension you've got on the filament. So I'm going to try that and see if it pushes out more filament than what the old one was did and see if it fixes my problem. Okay guys Join along and let's get into it. Oh, before we do, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, what are you doing? Come on. <laughs> I get lots of watches, but not, not a lot of you are subscribing. So with the subscription, as you probably already know, it alerts you to whenever I put a new video up. And um, then you won't miss any. Okay, so we've got this problem where the... Still, it's not coming out properly, but if I get it the bag here and just push the filament in, it now starts extruding filament. But of course, I haven't done it properly before, so you're going to have problems and it's just loosely sit, sitting on the chopping some plate. So, the extruder, something is going on with the extruder. So, what I've got is I've got sent this extruder to try. It's a K1 extruder upgrade kit. Basically, it's just a new little extruder. So I'm going to put that on that printer and see how it goes. See what difference it makes. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is pop the top off just here on the extruder. I just get a little flathead screw. I don't, it doesn't need much force, but just do slightly one side each and it just pops off like that. There's these little plastic knobs here that are holding it on and then there's um, screws on each side there's two on each side that we need to get out with a allen wrench so you can see where that one is up the top there have something that you can put the screws into as well and there's one just underneath it vertically just straight underneath Oh. Make sure you've got the um, the power turned off when you're doing it. And it's the same on the other side. There's sort of one screw. It's towards the back. I don't know if you can see it there. It's there. That needs to come off as well. And it just, the extruder just doesn't seem to have enough power to pull the, the filament through for some reason. I can, just, I can just push it with my hand so it's not getting jammed or anything. So I don't, I don't know what's going on. I need that. Okay, so the extruder's this bit here and there's the motor for the extruder. I wonder if the motor's having problems, but we'll find out soon enough. Because if the motor's having problems, it's not going to have the power to push the extruder around. Oh, it looks a bit grubby anyway. <clears throat> this has been running basically 24-7 since I got it 
about a year ago. It doesn't stop, as you can see in my little madhouse of printing. <laughs> okay. And that's not all of them. Yeah, this is just the um, current little storage area, and then they go out into the garage. But I've run out of space in the garage to store stuff. Okay, so the extruder's got two bolts that hold the motor and the extruder together. There's one there and one there. So one on each side. So one down here and one over here. Once you undo them, it'll just all come apart. So it's, it's quite easy to get hold of. So what have I done? I've undone three screws and five and two screws on here. So that's five screws all together. And you'll see I'll have the extruder out in just a second. Okay. There's that, and then they just should just separate, like so. There's a little washer there that you don't want to lose. So this is the extruder, okay, and when you pull it apart, be careful, there's a little, I'll take it out. So in the, in the lid, sometimes it gets stuck in here, but there's a little bearing in there, yeah, that's easy to lose, you can see how small it is. Okay, sometimes it's sitting in there and sometimes it's sitting on top of there because that just basically pushes into there. So if you're not careful, you can lose it off that. It's really easy. But look, it's got a bit of grime and grunk on it, but I upgraded these to metal ones because um, I thought they'd do a better job, but I'm not sure they do. They definitely run out, um, wear out less, but... Um, the way to clean them is to get a wire brush like this and just give all the all the cogs a bit of a scrub where the where the filament runs and then you can turn this little screw on the side here and it'll turn it around for you so you don't have to now if you want to take them off and do them individually, there's these little Allen, Allen screws in each one and they just come straight off. There's not, nothing hard about it, it's just a pretty simple mechanical little device. So just rub them until there's no white powdery. <laughs> That's the other thing. Could have got a build up of um, filament sort of gunk in there, and it's just slipping on the filament. But um, so I'll, I'll do the maintenance now. You can't. I can't believe I just did that. So after just telling you to be careful about that tiny little bearing, I know <laughs> no longer. <laughs> Know where that tiny little bearing is. What did I do with it? I could have sworn I just left it on my table, but now I can't see it anyway. A few moments later. Okay, so this little one comes out. So it's good. It comes with all the required bolts and screws and stuff. Now, if you do like this, I'll have a link in the description of this video of where to get it from. Come on out. I wonder if it's got it. Okay, that's going to go on the bottom. Actually, I'll put this. So that's the little <coughs> Bowden tube that fits in here. So you don't have a unicorn um, attachment to it yet. And it's going to slip in this way. Just exactly the same way the <clears throat> old one came out. Okay. So motor on. This here, it would open up like so to pull the, the um, teeth open. So I'm gathering this probably goes in here. Yep, that's what it is. Okay. Okay, so this little screw is going to be along with this little it's got a little spring in here as well I'm not 
sure what that wash is for. Anyway, so they've got a spring and that screw. <coughs> no doubt will go in. That will go in there. This will go in here. There, I would say. And that will be the tensioner for how much. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. I can see what it does. Okay, so this little black screw screws up and down the the bolt to give tension on the spring. But you've got to get the bolt in first, so that's going to require an Allen key. Is that the right one? Nope. Maybe it's the same one as the others. This one? Nope. Next one. This one. <laughs> Okay. So you just wind this in here. What I don't understand is how am I meant to open it to get my filament down there? Because once it's in, and I want to put filament in, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to get my filament. Let me just get some filament. Oh, it'll push through. It's okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so you don't need to open it up. What you do is you put your filament there, manually wind it, no doubt. And that will feed it all the way into the... Like so. Cool. Okay. Okay. Okay, so instead of having the, the switch which you flick off and on on this one to open and close the wheels, these wheels stay, always stay closed and when you've got it in, you just, you'll just be winding it like so. Cool. To get the filament in. So you do a manual push in and then you do the automatic one where the print head heats up and it pushes it through the print head. This one here will tighten the um, tighten that cog arm so the cogs get closer and you can loosen them up to make the cogs a bit looser if you want to do that. So that's just the tightening of the cogs. So that's cool. Okay. So you can tighten and loosen them there and manually feed it into the into the um, print head with the screw up the top here. Okay, now let's put the engine back, oh, the engine, the motor back on. Let's not forget the screw here. Not screw, the um, washer. And then this will go on. Hmm. I want it to go like that. Like so, okay. So just be careful the way you put it in. Just double check when you're putting it in that you're putting it in so then the wires at the bottom here aren't going to interfere so it's going like so okay so this, if this is in the spot like that then this is going to have to go on sort of like that okay so the cables are down the bottom there so okay guys so you got the two different size screws yeah you got the longer one and the shorter one. So the longer one goes where there's this meaty bit of metal here. The short one goes in here. Down in between that little, when you open that up. It's down in there and it countersinks all the way in. And then it's sort of just drawing those two little bits of metal through and you can see the bottom of the screw here. And that one actually comes out a little bit. So that's okay. That doesn't matter because when you put this on, it's going to go like that and the screws are just going to be facing out, so it doesn't matter. With this one, you're going to have to undo this to get it on. I'll show you why. I just noticed it. When you open it up, that's where the screw goes. You go in, kind of go in like that. So this will go on like that. And I'll be in like that. Okay, so I need to open this up and thread the screw through there. Through that 
hold in there. Sorry, I'm a bit disjointed. That there's no instructions with it, but it sort of makes sense when you when you actually look at it properly. You got two screws. You got the little ones here that won't go all the way through, or the long ones that go through and stick out. I'm not going to make a huge difference because it's just sticking out to somewhere where nothing else goes. So this one needs to be a longer one. So you can see with just changing the extruder, all it is is undoing five screws. It's not a big job. It's not a hard job. Anyone could do it if they want to. Before I put it on though, I will get the um, this bit with that little and put that at the top of where this joins in. Now the spring will be pushing it closed. And if it's not joining up, you just got to turn the cog a little bit, this one here, and then it'll close fully. So the spring keeps it closed. And puts a little bit of tension on the, must be. Okay, so once you've got the screw in, and it should stop at the at the end there, you can see how it's all the, just all the way through there. Now, when you've got the screw in, this little black bit doesn't move the screw but it tensions the spring. I don't know if you can see that, where it's got the gap between the bolt. Okay, can you see gap where it's got between the gap and the bolt? See the gap just there? And then when I unscrew it, it closes that gap up and you can't see the screw anymore. So it's just moving the spring in, there's all this black bit still on. As you can see now the screws appearing at the side there. Okay, so what it's actually doing is putting tension on here and moving the two wheels closer together. So it's putting more um, tension on the, the wheel so when it turns, it's slipping less. So you can adjust the tightness of this. So when I get you get it in there, I just need to make it on the right way. No, there we go. Now that's too tight because I can feel it really. There we go. And now it's coming out the bottom there. Okay. So I'm just turning this little screw here. Okay. So this bit of filament here. About out of the way. So as I turn the screw out the top here. See that, that one there? As I turn that, you'll see that it's um, moving the filament in and out. Let's hold this ah. that way. And if I tighten it up more, it's just making it hard, a little bit harder for me to pull it and turn it. So I don't probably need it that hard. I'll loosen it right off and then it can, as long as it doesn't pull out, which it's not, so that's okay. So I'll take it all the way out. Okay, so now this just goes in and the, the little blue Bowden tube bit there, you might have a clear one. I've changed mine over to a, um, oh, what do they call them, unicorn Bowden tube. It's there. And this one, oh Capricorn, sorry, not unicorn, Jesus. So that just pushes in. I felt it clip into that um, bit of Bowden tube, yeah? So you can see it completely replaces the extruder that I had on before. Now all I need to do is put the, <coughs> the screws in the side of it. I'll just use the ones I had before. Since those were... <coughs> three little ones that I had in my little container here. Okay, so I've got those three little screws that I had before. They should, one would hope, fit back into where the others came out. Now the first time you put the screws in, they might be a little fiddly because they haven't worn into place yet, but they should go in relatively easy, I think. Okay, so once you got the screws in, do we want to put, this doesn't go back on top because that's, so this is spare now. You don't need it anyway. So I'm just gonna put this in. 
trying to get it there and then just okay now when I pulled it it pulled back a little bit that's why I did the little screw up at the side here a bit so now that that's all done I can turn it on okay so now what I'll do is I'll start the print just do oh shit. <laughs> I won't do that yet I'll get the old one off because it's having so many problems let's see if shit that was So, most this crap off. So basically, isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. Get any finger marks that were on there off. Nice clean surface. Okay, so what I'll do now. First thing, I'll do is, first thing I'll do is I'll purge, so what we want to do is go into the second option and the middle option and then just go extrude okay. and see what it pulls out. It, better, it should pull out some filament, it should pull out some filament out of the print head. So it's just got to warm up and then we should see a st st steady flow of filament coming out okay so it should be coming out any minute now ah there we go it was coming out but there's a little bit on the thing so that's because it's moving around because the plate fans on but you can see it's um extruding out okay And the thickness of that seems to be okay. Sometimes you can tell just by looking at it. The thickness of the um, bits that get extruded. So that doesn't look too bad. So I'll just start my print again. And see how that goes. So just, I've got a print that was failing. I'm just going to start that to print again. So that was the one I just pulled off. Pulled off the bed there that had not done a very good job. Okay, we can see that um, it is extruding a nice, even um, layer of filament there. That's better than it was before. Oh, wow. That's going nice. I'm, I'm really happy about that. So that extruder is working really well at the moment. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that layer. Perfect. Okay, so that's the um, new extruder. The you can see that's the name of the company on the side there. And that is what it's called, the K1 extruder upgrade kit. Um, I'm quite impressed with it. It's um, it's printing out a really nice first layer, as you saw. Um, it was better than what it was doing before. I'm assuming that the um, cogs got full of filament crap and maybe it would have worked okay when I um, when I cleaned it out but I like the fact that it's got the little tuning um, bit on the side so you can tighten up the um, the cogs if you want to loosen them up um, but yeah that's really it's doing a really good job okay guys so this is the it actually finished which is really good because I haven't done that for a little while nice big print as you can see I did notice it's <clears throat> probably flow rate is a bit different to what I usually get so I've got a few little lines there that'll be pumping out a bit more filament than what I've set it up for before so I'm just going to adjust the flow rate but I'm really happy with the fact that it seems to be pumping out really well okay guys uh, thanks for watching um, I hope it helped out um, if any of you decide to buy it this is the um, this is a company and that is what it's called it's k1 extruder upgrade kit the good thing about it that i find is that little knob at the side that allows you to adjust the extruder tension on the on the two cogs that pushes the filament in uh, so i find that really good it's sort of taking from the old sort of extruders that we used to have they all used to have that sort of stuff on them 
Okay, so if you uh, liked the video or it helped you out at all, a like and subscribe would be much appreciated. Um, also, if um, you feel like buying me a coffee, they are always welcome. There's a link down below to do that. I think it costs $5 for a coffee I think if, if you want to donate to the channel. So all money that I get, either through um, uh, advertising or anything like that, all goes back into the channel. I don't spend any of it. Um, I'm just trying to build my channel up so then it can pay some bills. At the moment, it's just creating bills, <laughs> as most things do when you first start. Um, I've also got some affiliate links down below. One is for Creality, so stuff you buy from Creality. I get a little bit of commission if you buy through that link. It doesn't cost you any more. You get exactly the same discounts and everything you do if you bought directly from their website. Uh, there's also one for Sunly Filament, uh, which I use a fair bit because it's a decent filament at a really good price. Uh, and you can buy bulk and you get big discounts if you buy bulk, which, uh, as you can see behind me, I do a lot. <laughs> so, um, have a nice day, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, ciao. <laughs> Okay guys, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate the support. You might like one of these, or one of these videos um, that I've made in the past, so feel free. Okay, thanks guys, bye.